Okay, so I'm going to open the meeting at 7.01. And the meeting is remote only. And we ask all participants to say their full name when they speak. It would also help if they put their full name on their screen. But that, and all likewise, ask them to only to speak when they've been recognized by the chair and to try to stay on topic as much as possible, keeping our comments two to three minutes at a time. That would be very helpful. And we're gonna start with board attendance. And so when I uh, call your first name, will you say your full name and who you represent? And if you're not a city appointment, then you're just a recognize yourself as at-large member. That would be helpful. So I'm Donna Bate and I'm an at-large member. Doug? Douglas Hoyt, and I am a at-large, no, I'm a representative of my beer. <laughs> uh, Justin? Justin Dretschler, I am a Montpelier representative. Kim? Kim Cheney, I'm an at-large member. Mel? I'm Mel Chambell, or Mel, and I'm a Barry City member. Thank you. And others present when you speak, if you'll just say your name, that would be helpful. First thing on our agenda is to approve the agenda itself. You didn't, Anybody? You didn't want me to uh, <laughs> what about my Jim? presence? I'm sorry. Oh, Jim, I missed you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jim. <laughs> not, not that it matters, but Jim Ward, Barry City Rep. Of course it does. Uh, anyone else I missed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Jim. Don't let me pass you up. Uh, so on to approve the agenda. Are there any additions? All right. Any public comments? I presume the phone user doesn't have a name on it. Is that uh, you, Stephen? Stephen, I, we need the phone owner to identify themselves. If it's not Stephen, would the person tell me who they are? I don't even see one, Donna. Pardon? I don't see a phone user. I have one. It's down the corner. Um, call in user one. And they do, they do have to identify themselves. Uh, the call-in person, would you please identify yourself? Okay. Well, we'll just move forward. There's uh, no public comment. Approval of minutes. We had both August 4th and August 11th. August 4th, any changes or amendments? If not, oh, Kim, raise your hand. Yes. Um. What I asked for on August 4th was not yeah. merely a continuance so Justin could vote, but because I did not think, well, back up. Your notice was to ask Televate to prepare the agenda. And in my email, I said it wasn't competent to do that. When I talked with Rick Burke, he agreed with that and said he would need help from others because they had no legal capacity and didn't have the capacity to um, solicit the 10 um, towns or however many were required. And I also wanted a week to talk about who is going to perform the analysis to do the governance proposal. And that was passed and unanswered. And we get to comments on the uh, proposal itself, I will comment on the failure to do that properly. So All I right, I'm sorry, Kim, I'm just gonna back you up a bit. 
Uh, your focus is you have some amendments to make to the August 4th minutes. You can talk yes. about further opinions about whatever action did or didn't happen. And so could you be more specific? Yes. I, I did actually listen to that tape and try to just consolidate. I wasn't trying to have every quote in there. So what would you like us to consider well, adding? I sent a message to the board and part of that message and part of my request was that we get a week's delay to determine who is going to write the governance proposal for the um, grant application. And that was denied. And that, that motion failed. It's in the minutes. Well, my motion meant to include all the reasons I put in my message to the board and you only put in the, to let Justin vote. Okay, I can go back and listen to it, but I, I don't think you had it all there, but if you can propose well, an me, amendment and the board can decide to accept it or not. Just, if I send a message to the board, is that included in the website? No. It's supposed to be. No, we don't have all the communications on the website. Uh, but we could. I don't believe, Justin, that it went on the website. Did it? No. Well, it should. It, well, that it, it's not an official uh, board piece, but um, if, if, well, first let's deal with the minutes, and then we can ask if, if it's supposed to be on the website, fine. But well, it was not part of the board packet. Um, I don't want to prolong this. I said what I said, and I do think if a board member urges the board to do something and they refuse, that should at least be a record in the website. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking for a, a motion either to amend specifically, and maybe Justin understands what you, your amendment is. It, are you actually making a motion to amend the August 1st, 4th minutes to reflect that you objected to us acting on well, this contract? I think what I'm asking is that the board adopt a policy that policy request made by any member to all the other board members should be included on the city on the authority website. Well, but I mean, I, if you wanted it done, then from my point of view, you should have done it properly. You should have sent it to the, ch the chair to distribute with the agenda and not have direct communication with the board, which you like to do, which is really not the right way to do it. Well, it's what I did, and I wanted yep. to get my message across because sometimes okay. you don't do what I ask you to do. Okay. So, so, so it's a very simple request. So what if we put it in the minutes that Kim requested that his email to the board be attached to the minutes? That's fine. Donna, is that that we're going to, you want me to put that in these minutes or are we going to adjust the old minutes? We're, we're now looking at August 4th. I guess what I'm proposing, if Kim agrees, is that we just put uh, that Kim with the, his motion, and I can find it for you, uh, that failed, that Tim, Kim requested that his policy request to the board be posted on the website. That's more exact what he's requesting, right? You want your think, policy that went to the board. I, I think that this? belongs in this meeting minutes, not, not the Well, prior. if you post on the website under the August 4th with the minutes and the agenda, that's yeah, what so other attachments do. I, yeah. I'm just wondering, Donna, it, are the old minutes getting altered or do you want me to just put this discussion in these minutes and then I'll post the email on the web when the old minutes get posted? I just want to know where you, you want me to record this. Well, if the, we actually amend the August 4th minutes, it gets recorded in the minutes themselves. And then in this meeting, that's when the actual motion happened. You know, we'll say the August 4th minutes were amended, blah, 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 blah. 
but that means we need to go back and actually do the amendment in the August 4th minutes. Does that make sense, Justin? Yep. Okay. Uh, Jim, you have a question? I'm just trying to sort this out. The email that was sent, the email in question, was that presented at the August 4th meeting? Uh, right. uh, Kim referred to it, so we so can talk about it. It was done before that meeting. Yeah, he sent it out before the meeting, yes. Okay. Uh, because what I was going to suggest was that if he wanted to represent it to the board tonight, we'd just include it in these meetings. If he's requesting that, that's a traditional board member request that something be included in the minutes. So we could just, as you said, attach it to, to these minutes. But did he actually present it at, at the previous meeting? Uh, yes, it had all to do with business that happened at the pre at August 4th meeting. It had to do with Televate's contract. Okay. I mean, it sounds as though he just wants to have on the record his yes. thinking yes. of it. And whether we yes. attach it to this meeting or that meeting, I'm not sure it makes a lot of difference, Kim. But um, That's correct, Jim. I, <clears throat> I would... The same uh, as for Justin. Well, procedure-wise, it was presented and talked about August 4th. We're amending this moment, August 4th minutes, so on the website, it should be attached with everything else around August 4th, the agenda, the minutes, and the attachment. It should go with August 4th. Now, I haven't had a second yet to Kim's motion. If people understand it, is there a second? Repeat the motion. I move is it to include it with the August 4th meeting? Well, that's yes, what Donna thinks should happen, so I'll agree with that. What uh, I question. And remember, we're talking about the August 4th minutes. That's what's on the table right now. And so he's asked for the amendment to happen on the August 4th. That's why I'm talking about the August 4th minutes. Can I say what I have written down on the, sure. for the motion? And Kim, tell me if this sounds right. Kim Cheney moved to amend the August 4th minutes so that they include his motion to have his email to the board posted on the CVPSA website. He also moved that the email be posted on the website along with the August 4th minutes and agenda. That's fine. Okay, is there a I'll second? Okay, thank you, Jim. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Terrific. Uh, that passes. August 11th minutes. Entertain a motion. Move to accept them. Thank you, Mel. Second. I'll second it. Second. Jim second. Any further discussion around the 11 minutes? All in favor say aye. Aye. I'm opposed. It passes. I'm abstaining. I wasn't in the meeting. Okay. Uh, would you take your hand down, oh, Kim? Sorry. Yep. That's all right. All right. So we have uh, one. Donna, I'm sorry. Can I just butt in real quick? Who yep. seconded the August 4th motion? Was it Jim that seconded the August Jim, 4th Jim motion? Jim did okay. both. Got it. Yep. Okay. Next on the agenda is discuss the application. And I understand uh, Joe is here. Doug Brent isn't, but he certainly did a lot of uh, yeoman's work as well as Joe. And I was told Carrie, uh, Carrie McCool was also uh, very helpful with the application. Uh, Joe, do you want to start it off or does Rick, yeah. who would like to jump for as, as I'm sorry, this is Dominic Archery. I just want to point out Chief Pete was uh, instrumental oh, yeah. in getting that submitted as well. And uh, he's probably not here because he doesn't want me to bug him. I was uh, just bugging him too much night last week. So <laughs> I hope he forgives me. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh, Joe, you want to make comments, please. Uh, it was a pleasure to work with Dom and Rick on this project. Um, being that it was a city of Montpelier uh, application for funding 
I am going to defer the update to Dominic. Uh, that way he can give a, an all inclusive. Okay, Joe, thank you. All right, happy to do that. Uh, would you like me to do that, Donna? Sure, go yeah. forward. All right. all right, thank you. Again, this is Dominic Arcuri uh, with Televate. Uh, I worked with, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Joe and, and Chief Brent and uh, Chief Pete, Kerry, uh, a number of the stakeholders there to uh, put together the uh, application uh, for funding. It was submitted uh, uh, for the city of Montpelier. Uh, it identified the uh, uh, requirements and the uh, request for funding for a uh, upgraded, enhanced uh, radio system for uh, to support uh, both cities, the city of Barrie and the city of Montpelier, as well as Capital Fire uh, for their uh, uh, fire communications. It uh, mirrored the uh, report that uh, Televate put uh, together previously, and uh, it was structured uh, for that type of network. We were required to receive quotes from actual quotes from uh, for equipment from vendors or from state contracts to include in the uh, application. We requested quotes from several vendors. We did receive uh, quotes for equipment from Motorola, uh, which we used to, uh, uh, to include in the application. Uh, the application was for a total of uh, 3.2 million with some additional uh, contingency added on uh, to make a total of approximately $3.5 uh, million uh, to support the uh, procurement, build out, and installation of the enhanced uh, radio network uh, that would connect the two dispatch facilities in the cities and that would provide enhanced coverage and capacity for both the cities and Capital Fire. Maybe we should just take questions and see where people's interests are. Unless Rick, you want to add your two cents worth? I know only that uh, I was very uh, productive. Uh, I was very uh, Hope you got an echo going there. I don't know why. It's those California lines. They just don't work. Yep. Maybe. Maybe we'll move to questions while you work on your technology. Well, I'm just going to say, um, I give a high five to Joe for his Okay. Uh, questions about the application. I mean, you sent us four dense pieces, um, just really amazing. Um, very, very thorough. Kim, you have your hand up, you have a question? Well, I have some comments on the application. If you wanna hear them now. Okay. Well, I congratulate Televate for doing a Superb job. I've never had a quarrel with them. I think they did a wonderful job. On the other hand, the application should fail. There was absolutely no, none of the requirements for eligibility for governance were met. The RFP required that there be memorandum of understandings with each participating town agreeing to, uh, and then they had to enter into a contract with the city to help maintain and 
upgrade any project that was built. And the solicitations from the local towns were absolutely useless. And none of those were MOUs saying that the towns would actually step up and pay for any shortfall or take care of any ongoing problems. What I understand the procedure will be is the application will go to a review committee by the federal security unit, which is really a state unit with Terry LaValle and two other public safety people who are supposed to review it. And even a casual review will show that the application totally fails to prove that the city of Montpelier is eligible to apply. And none of the solicitations from the towns meet any of the requirements that the RFP require. I think the review committee has two choices. They can ditch the application and say it simply doesn't show that there's an eligible applicant. I think more likely they have the ability to ask for more information. And my prediction is they will reject the application and send it back until a real governance proposal is made. It's clear to me from reading what was written by the Mount Peter Police Department for governance that it no way meet the stated requirements. And I followed the stated requirements in the various grant applications and they couldn't be clearer. There has to be a contractual agreement that sets forth the budget, the cost, and an agreement to share in any necessary funds. And there's nothing like that in this. And the contract that was submitted, which had to do for dispatch only with the uh, column cap fire for short, had nothing to do with building a whole new system. So my prediction is this will be bounced back with an instruction to prepare um, a real um, governance proposal. If you're interested, I read the Wyndham County proposal. It doesn't have a governance proposal either. I haven't been able to review the others, but I think there's almost none. So I was told by uh, Terry LaValle that the review board would meet this coming Tuesday. And I'll either be proved right or wrong, but that's that's my view of what's likely to happen. Because okay. otherwise there's simply it's an in it's a it's a failed application. All right. Um uh, Dom, you have your, oh, Jim, do you have your, I'm going to let him, do you want to say something, Don, before yeah. Jim talks? Uh, yeah, yes, Don, uh, thank you. I'd like to address uh, Kim's comments, please. Uh, this is Dominic Arcuri with uh, Televate. Uh, I, I believe we did address uh, every uh, aspect of the RFP uh, as we put together the uh, uh, the application with the 
uh, numerous attachments that were provided. As Kim mentioned, we did uh, provide an example of a contractual agreement uh, between uh, the city of Montpelier and uh, Capital Fire for dispatch services. Uh, we did that to identify that uh, uh, there is an ongoing contract and uh, an, an extended contract uh, for sustaining those dispatch services. Uh, we did have letters of support from all of the towns and cities uh, that were involved uh, that would be uh, dispatched by either the city, either the cities. Uh, those were included as well. Uh, we did address the aspect of sustainability as to how the network would be maintained. Uh, we did provide a, a spreadsheet of the uh, capital equipment plan. Uh, that was approved by Capital Fire, which has uh, al does allocate funding from each of the towns, uh, ongoing funding over the next 10 years to support uh, maintenance of equipment. Uh, that was included in the uh, application. And we also identified from a governance structure, uh, our uh, interpretation of the request of the RFP was to address how the project would be governed. And we did describe that, that there would be a contractual uh, relationship uh, with a vendor and uh, there would be a, uh, a sort, if you wanna call it a steering committee or a stakeholder group uh, made up of uh, various representatives from the, uh, uh, the public safety agencies within the capital region uh, as well as the vendor, uh, as well as uh, potentially a implementation consultant, where there would also be a contractual arrangement. And that is how the uh, project uh, would be managed. So we did describe that in the application. So we feel we have addressed those, uh, those items. Uh, I understand Kim's concerns. We feel we have addressed those. Uh, I, I also point out that we met uh, with Terry LaValle uh, during the development of the application uh, a couple of times uh, to uh, best understand as, uh, as we could what they were looking for with the application. Uh, he did give us some comments and suggestions uh, which were incorporated uh, into the application uh, what, um, as it was submitted. Thank you. Yes, uh, Jim, your hand was up next. Uh, I was going to comment on something else, but just want to ask Dominic. So your contention is that you have you um, have met the requirements of the grant application based on your interpretation of it. Yes, that is our belief. Okay. So if I could, what I was going to say before, and I'll still say it again. There's nothing that we can do now, regardless of whether we agree or disagree with Kim, until it gets acted on. So I moved. The, I'm not. Not making a formal motion, but I suggest that we just move forward and see what happens. We don't have anything, any, any other choice. Okay. Can you hear me or am I still not doing this? Okay, Rick, you're still a little bubbly. All right. Okay, you're not, not readable. Yeah, I'll call in. I'll be back. Okay. Going. Okay. Um, well, the application did go in, the work was done. It, it was hard work, uh, lots and lots of pieces and lots and lots of editing because wonderfully, a lot of public safety personnel people really responded. Uh, we do, I would like to entertain a motion to make payment of the $3,000 for Televate's fulfillment of their contract to assist with this application. So moved. So now so made it. And J Jim or Doug? I second it. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, that was, I, I'm confused. Maybe Justin got who the second was. I, I heard Jim. I think, it was, I think it was Kim. I think it was Kim. Kim, okay. Yeah. Kim. okay, great. Seconded. Any further discussion about uh, approving the payment for the work done? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Terrific. So that payment has been approved and we will do a better job getting your check out. 
I don't know whether Justin wants to do it electronically or manually. He can let me know. Uh, but we will. Uh, we don't have any vacations on staff, so between one or the other, we should get it out. Uh, okay. Anything else that that any Don, Don or Rick would like to say before you depart, and we move on to our next agenda item. I I, I guess maybe now is a good time to mention that. Uh, Doug Brent is retiring. I think his last day is the 16th. And I don't know if it's a surprise. Oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. Joe, I'm sorry. Okay, take it out of the minutes. <laughs> oh, Doug's not going to worry. Doug's not going to watch the video of this meeting. I don't believe it. Anyway, um, but I, I'll <clears throat> be sending out some things about that, but we do owe a lot for him. He's been very consistently around the table uh, all the years I've been on the board. Uh, Joe, go ahead, yell at me. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, after uh, 49 years of service to the Vermont Fire Service, uh, Chief Brent will be retiring on Friday the 16th. Uh, coincidentally, that's his 68th birthday. So uh, everybody, uh, the board has received the information about Friday. Uh, I encourage you to attend. It would be a nice meet and greet. And then i uh, follow it up by, uh, as I outlined in the emails. Um, I, I, I have to say one thing is that I want to remind CBPSA that the application period for this was roughly three weeks, mm -hmm. three and a half if you want to get technical. There was a lot of moving parts. There was a lot of stuff to be done in three weeks. So that narrow time frame, we had to stick with what was there and what was currently in place. And so I can appreciate people uh, questioning about certain avenues, but we were not going to fabricate or change what is currently in place and working historically for the last 20 years. Um, so that is where we came from as a group, and it was decided. Um, and I think that's really important to understand. And we did have some guidance periodically from Chief Hoyt, who was there, who participated, and and really was kept abreast of everything that occurred. So I just want to just mention that. I think that's very important to understand that this is not grant money. This is state funding out of the state budget that they have allocated for this process. And everybody keeps saying the grant, the grant, this is not grant money. That's all I have to say. And again, I'd like to appreciate Dom's uh, work on this. Uh, we were in lockstep for many, many weeks and I talked to him more than I talked to my own wife. So again, <laughs> thank you, Dom. I appreciate it. I've said my piece and I will turn it back to the chair. Thank you, Joe. So, so uh, 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 if I may chime in, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, yes, and then, uh, then right. it's Doug's turn. I missed his hand. It's up there in a dark corner. Um, yes, go uh, ahead. All right. I, well, I, I just wanted to say, uh, again, to follow up with, with what Dom said earlier, and, and also to address Kim's concern about governance. So w Dom and I went through the application multiple times, searched for the word governance, because we also were, you know, we wanted to be sure that we'd have um, a, a cogent response regarding governance. And the only mention of governance was governing the implementation. So there was no request to, you know, there was no requirement from our interpretation of the application to submit uh, how we govern ourselves. And we obviously think, all think that governance is important or you wouldn't have a CVPSA and you wouldn't meet regularly to discuss these valuable topics. However, the application only required us to provide a, an overview of how we would govern the, the application, the implementation of, of the funding to achieve our, our, the objectives. And that, we wrote that up. You know, we created a committee, you know, that would, be, we, that would be constituted of local public safety officials and other members, including, you know, representatives of, of the town. So, uh, and, and select board so that we would have a comprehensive review. And that was our, that was our approach uh, to, to address that. So, 
Um, and, and you know, I, I think I really believe when we discussed this with Joe and with others, uh, Chief Pete, and, and we came to the, the, you know, came to the consolidated agreement that this was the right, this is what they requested, and so that's what they submitted. So if if they deny if they deny our application because we didn't provide a formal how we govern ourselves, um, you know, on a day to day basis, I think we would have an, we would appeal that because that's not what they asked for directly in their application. And I just wanted to share that with everyone. Thank you for giving me yes. the time. Yes, yes. Okay, Doug. Wait. No. All right, uh, Kim. I think you actually beat Jim to the wave. So go ahead, Kim, and then Jim. Look, I understand completely what Joe Alter said. As I've told him personally, I have great respect for his work and how hard he worked on this and everybody else. Um, and that's not my complaint. The complaint very simply is the eligibility requirement says there must be collective support among all participating jurisdictions. This should include memorandum of understanding agreements and letters of intent uh, representing the select boards. And that's what I'm looking at. And I hope Rick Burke, you are correct. It's not my interpretation. And that's going to be reviewed by the reviewing committee, as I said. And we'll either get a chance. There was no way you could do a governance proposal in three weeks. I don't dispute that. Um, it would require a lot of work and a lot of negotiations and talking to people. And I just hope that we'll get another chance at it. Okay. Uh, anything else? Otherwise, we will close the discussion on the application, thanking everybody. <coughs> oh, Jim. I just wanted to correct something that uh, Deputy Chief Walsh said. Doug Brent's going to be 69, Joe. We're the same age. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're young chickens. Jeez. Okay, anything else? We're gonna move on then to discuss. Uh, thank you, Televate, you're, you're more than welcome to stay, but I also understand time and thank you very much. Thank you very, thank very, you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Always our Thanks pleasure. for the opportunity to join. We're clapping, we're clapping. <laughs> I know. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, bye. Uh, so the next item is more to get people thinking about that indeed, in October, we have to start placing ads. And a lot will fall on Justin or I will divide the doors <laughs> up, but that the charter's deadline backs things up so that in November, we have to start placing ads about our meetings and our budget. So I, I wanted people to start realizing that we have to start thinking now and not wait till January as far as our budget and what we want to do next year as far as the agenda. The other thing that's happening is in March, I, Doug, and Jim all hit our threshold of limits of terms. So there's going to be a lot of turnover. So I would hope that we would you know, keep that in mind as we're planning uh, 2023 and 2024. We have to do like three budgets out, so then we'll be also dipping into an estimated budget for 2025. So people have a general discussion just to get things going and people to think about things. This is the time to bring it up and, and help us to be really focused in October when we meet. <laughs> Donna, so what positions are gonna be open in March that we're gonna to need to fill? Um, board positions? Yeah. Yeah. So there'll be like one the there'll be one Barry. Should be started. Yeah, one Barry rep appointment and one Montpelier appointment and one at large. And we have two at larges open actually because Brent's position hasn't been filled. Okay, wait, so, so one Barry four, appointment. 
One Montpelier appointment and two at large that are both elected. Yeah, so we have four people. Yep. Donna, I'm not term limited. Excuse me? I am not term limited. No, you're in your last term. I know that. Correct. Yeah, I didn't list your name. Jim. Oh, Jim. Sorry. Doug from Montpelier, Jim from Barry, myself, and then the vacancy. So we have four slots that will open up. Okay, so. Um, and right now, uh, I did instruct Chris, our assistant treasurer, to invoice the cities. Uh, with this last spend, spend down, we have like 5,000 in our bank account, a little bit less. Uh, we Until the first payment comes in from Barry and Montpelier of $7,500. We get those payments from the city, from the ballot item in quarters. So we'll get that 3,000. So we need to be thinking about what we want to put on the uh, ballot for the 2023 town meeting day. Whether you want um, to do more training, go ahead. Um, Kim, when did you say that this DPS application is going to be decided? What was your intel? The, the end of well, September. Well, don't, don't hold me to this. I was told by it, Terry it, that the, okay. the review committee was going to meet this coming Tuesday. It seems and like knowing the answer to whether we got any, whether any money is going to be approved for that would really drive our agenda moving mm -hmm. forward, right? Like it, it seems like we really, it seems like we should maybe table this until October because we could have a very ambitious agenda if they give us all that money. Yes. Well, but even awesome. with that, even with that, I mean, uh, that's why we're not making any decisions tonight, but to discuss it and think about it. So what if the application goes through? What's our role? Because we are still without funding for staff. We're still without any profile to go after any grants. So what do we want to do? What's our role in this? Or likewise, do we want to beef up training and the focus back to dispatchers? So just having people think about it. And maybe that's all we can do is just what's already been stated. But uh, definitely, uh, Justin, you and I need to start looking at the charter and looking at dates and getting things in place. Okay, any, uh, oh, Kim, you got your hand up again. Is that left over or new? Well, that was new. I agree with Justin. I think it's hard to have a serious discussion until next month. We just don't I don't want know. a serious discussion. I just want ideas put out there. Like, oh, gee, I like Jim sometimes has ideas. Gee, I really want us to do such and such for the fire people, uh, fighters. Well, if there, is, all just... if there is going to be a new governance procedure, then that, to me, depends on what we're going to do. There are alternatives to CVPSA, but they have to be have to meet the criteria for a governance proposal. And what we have now is handshakes all around, but no binding agreements. And uh, so we need to know where we are. If there, the CBPSA charter would require the towns, not cat fire, to join it, and that would require a tremendous amount of work and explanation. So whichever way we go, we need to know, I mean, look, I want this thing built. I want to get a new system. And we're going to need to have a, uh, a governance plan. Um, regardless of what happens with the grant. I, there is no governance plan at the moment. It can't all be done on a handshake. Okay, so governance is one issue you'd like to have consider in that discussion, great. And it's, it's totally fine if people aren't ready. I'm hoping just having this discussion will make everybody think about it. Uh, any other business to come before the board? 
our regular meeting is will be October 13th, Thursday, 7 p.m. And if that's all we need to talk about, we can adjourn early for a change. <laughs> I I'll so move. Uh, I'm adjourning by unanimous consent. Thanks for the offer. All right. <laughs> Have a good evening, ladies and gentlemen.